Hi, I'm Dr. V. I'm Chief of the Spine Pain Program at Bloor Pain Specialists, and today I'm going to be talking about MRI. That's an excellent question, and rightfully alarming. A lot of people see the word fracture or defect, and sometimes referred to as a pars defect, and they get concerned. What do you mean my spine's broken? That is a scary question. Well, it really depends on, is it one-sided or two-sided? And interestingly, one-sided pars defects are usually the result of an incomplete closure of those vertebrae during embryogenesis or in the womb. So we're born with a gap. And so we've had it our whole lives, but sometimes we will find out in our say, 30s or 40s or 60s. And why? Well, that's when we get an x-ray. That's when we have back pain. That's when we have leg pain. That's when somebody starts looking. Well, we've had it our whole lives, so it's not necessarily something that we have to really be concerned about. Now, when somebody has one side, sometimes they're going to get the other side later on from an injury. It's oftentimes people will describe this as a pop they feel or, or a crack or some sort of noise they felt internally that resulted in a new type of pain. Then they get it investigated and they see that they have a gap in their pars, which is a part of the vertebrae. Now, if you think about your vertebrae, all of them are just rings of bone. And those rings are there as rings to stack on top of each other as a cylinder to protect the dangling spine in the center of the ring. And that protects the nerves. It's bone. It's hard. Well, the pars is part of that ring. So when you have a crack in the ring, it's no longer a circle like an O. It's more like a C. And when you have a crack on both sides or a pars defect on both sides, what happens is you have more of a C or U-shaped bone with an attachment that plugs in. That attachment is part of your spine still. It's just disconnected from the rest of the ring. It's held in place with ligaments, but like shoulders, like rotator cuffs, like knees, ligaments can get loose. And when things get loose, bones can move. So the pars is this little line right here. And that pars, when it's separated, when we have a fracture or defect, is a hole. And so that means that this bone is the spinous process, the part on our back that we touch, that we know is a bone when we touch somebody's spine, is separate from the rest of the vertebrae. So if we think about our vertebrae as a ring of bone, when this is separated, we have a C up here, and we have a part that can come separate or plug into that ring. So the danger with a pars defect is when there is mobility between the vertebrae between the spinal segments. When they start sliding along each other, essentially dislocating or subluxing. And that can be a scary thought to think about your spine dislocating. But it is actually a very common finding from a different perspective it does, in that it's not always a mobile movement, sometimes just a stable malalignment or misalignment. And that is related to joint growth. It doesn't have to be anything related to the parts. We have to take this into the context of what is clinically relevant. You should speak to your doctor about where your symptoms lie and how they connect to that anatomy. The defect on its own can be tested by applying local anesthetic into it to see if it is contributing to somebody's symptoms. And if it is, especially if, you, if it's present on both sides, and especially if it's present on both sides with instability, then it can be a good reason to have surgery. A treating spinal lysis or a pars defect is a supportive sort of treatment. In most cases, it's an improvement in the strength of the musculature around the spine so that the bones, the vertebrae, the separate bones, remember we don't have that one spine bone that moves as one piece, the separate bones that move independently are supported well by the musculature so that they move like synchronized swimmers, moving together, as opposed to jerking around and jumbling into each other and, and clicking and clanking this way and that, causing discomfort, potentially causing pain, sometimes even causing weakness as they pinch nerves or cause something to swell. And so by and large, it's supportive care. Sometimes 
it is surgical, especially if there are concerns for danger if other therapies have failed. And sometimes it's medical management with things like anti-inflammatories to reduce inflammation so that we're not so bothered by our discomfort so that we can move. But even with the anti-inflammatories on their own, they can have adverse effects. So really they should be used as a tool to facilitate somebody's rehab efforts so they can get stronger, so they can do their home exercise programs, so they have more stability around their spine. Thanks for watching today's video. Please like and subscribe below. If you have any questions that you'd like us to address in a future video, please leave them in the comments area. If you want us to answer any questions about your care specifically, please contact the clinic directly.